to our worship service for May 10th. I'm appreciating the fact that you are spending this time uh, with us, even as we continue our worship uh, from uh, a distance, from a safe distance. I'm looking forward to the time when we can once again gather in person, uh, and we're beginning to make a few plans for that at the church as we put our heads together on how we can, uh, once we're past this time, uh, safely uh, phase in our in-person worship. Today, as has been a part of our tradition in the past, we want to uh, celebrate the birthdays uh, that are among us, and we've noted that we've missed it for April as well as for May. So today, as I raise the uh, prayers uh, for those who are having birthdays, there's going to be quite a number of people on our list. So uh, please join me at this time, if you would, as we uh, pray for those who are having their birthdays or have just recently had them. Watch over your children, Brittany, Lance, Aiden, Beth, Nicole, Phyllis, Marcy, Zoe, Mike, Herbert, Matthew, Anum, Joey, Charles, Barb, Sanam, Mais, Carol, Madeline, Mallory, and Susan, Bill, Amanda, Jeffrey and Carrie, Mary, Phyllis, Jackson, McKenna and Aaron, Bill, Brianna, Marianne, Linda, Lana, and Corrine, Irene, and Emmett, O oh Lord, as their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And it's been our tradition to sing, uh, and so uh, here we go. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you another year through. And then a large round of applause for all of our, our birthday people. Today uh, is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and as we continue to celebrate these 50 days of Easter, today's gospel includes that promise that Jesus goes before us to the house of his Father to prepare places for us. Our baptism, it commissions us to share Jesus' mission here in this world, and First Peter reminds us that we are a holy people, called to proclaim the one who called us out of darkness into light. And we do this through words and deeds as we bear witness to our risen Christ, who is our way, our truth, and our life. Please join me this time as we uh, celebrate our thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for salvation through water, for the water in the font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
With my delight, let us unite in songs of great jubilation. You pure in heart, all bear your part, sing Jesus Christ our salvation. To set us free forever, he is risen and sends to all earth's ends, good news to save every nation. True God, he first from death has burst forth into life, all subduing. His enemy now vanquished, see, his death has been death's undoing. And yours shall be like victory, for death and grave, says he who gave his life for us, life renewing. Let praises ring, give thanks and bring to Christ our Lord adoration. His honor speed by word and deed to every land, every nation. So shall his love give us above from misery and death set free all joy and full consolation. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the seventh chapter of Acts. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he, Stephen, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout they all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is the 31st Psalm. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Here ends our song. Our second reading for today is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. 
And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading for today is according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our text today is from the time just before Jesus' crucifixion when he was preparing his disciples for his death and, and for their grief. He, he knew that they were going to feel confusion and chaos, fear, sorrow. So he wanted to do what he could beforehand to prepare them for what was certainly to come. Right now we also live in a time of fear, confusion, chaos, and grief. There have been over a quarter of a million deaths in the world due to this virus. More than 75,000 in the U.S. alone. And we're just all over the board in the ways that we deal with our fear and our sorrow, our frustration. Some have isolated themselves as though everything beyond their front door was just radioactive. Others are, are taking the recommended precautions seriously, even as they, they get on with the things in life that they can do from uh, behind a mask or while maintaining the correct social distance. 
And others seem to be acting out their grief and their fear and their frustration through, through some kind of, of revolt and denial that is unfortunately just putting the rest of us in a more vulnerable place. But you know what? I'm not really all that surprised by this range of reactions. As a pastor, I've had ample opportunities to walk with people through their times of grief. And I, I can tell you from experience that everyone deals with grief and fear and change differently. Grief and anxiety, they're, they're tough on a person, and no two people react quite the same way. Some do constructive things like sharing their support with others who are mourning in the case of a death, or, or perhaps making masks and sending cards to the lonely, or putting signs of gratitude for those who are doing jobs that place them at, at risk in their windows. These things in the case of sheltering in place. And, and some people play the carefree rebel as they defy the gods and hope that they beat the odds, while still others... In that same situation, they lash out at God, lash out at their life and their family, and, and, and sometimes even lash out at themselves as they embrace habits that they know are self-destructive. In our text, Jesus tells his disciples who will soon be battered by his brutal death and their loss and, and all the changes that will seem to overwhelm them in that moment, not to let their hearts be troubled. And you know what? That, that's great advice, right? But it's so very, very hard to do. It's hard to do in part because we have these darned human senses, these senses that God created for us to explore and understand our, our physical world with, but that aren't really attuned to the spiritual world. These, these eyes, they, they can usually see what's physically right there in front of them, but, but they can't see what's down the line and around that next corner. They can't see what's beyond the spiritual veil. Jesus, he told his disciples that no matter what they might be seeing in the next few days, they should remember that he would be well. He'd be with his father preparing places for them to come to him. And of course, he's talking about spiritual things here, heavenly things. And he wanted them to be comforted by the fact that he'd be soon coming back to bring them to where he was so that they could be with him in that place. And he assured them that they knew where he was going and they knew the way to get there. But Thomas, always the realist, he says, no, Lord, that's not quite true. We don't know where you're going. How could we possibly know the way to get there? And say what you will about Thomas, but, you know, the guy, he did know how to speak his truth. He was reminding Jesus that their physical eyes couldn't yet see the things that his eyes could see. Their minds couldn't grasp the truths that he seemed so certain of. So Jesus slows down, and he reminds them of the very deepest truth that he'd come to reveal, that he and the Father are one, that what they'd seen and experienced in him was always and forever the very reflection of the love and the ways of God. His values were God's values. His compassion was God's compassion. His hopes were God's hopes. And his power was God's power. He was, in a very real way, the physical incarnation of the spiritual being of God. He was for them, just as he said, the way and the truth and the life all rolled up into one concrete and solid physical being that their eyes could see and that they could touch and that they could question and follow and that they could trust. Hmm. And oh my Lord, how important it was for them to trust him now. 
before things started turning really messy. Trust him even before the moment when he would be betrayed and denied and they would all abandon him. Trust him before he would be tried and mocked and stripped and whipped and nailed to that cross and pierced with that spear and laid in that tomb. All that their physical eyes would be able to see was the violence and the blood, the, the cruelty and his weakness, his, his agony, his death, his, his lifeless body. And maybe at a stretch, their eyes would be able to see all their hopes and their dreams lying there shattered at the door of his tomb. And oh, how Jesus longed for them to have the, the spiritual eyes to see beyond that moment, to see the great spiritual victory that was playing out just beyond that curtain, even as these events took place. The victory that God had ordained would merit pulling aside that curtain for just a, just a short while so that God's beloved physical creatures would be able to see their risen Lord and partake in the joyous celebration of Christ's life that, that conquered even the lie of death. And that's what happened when three days later he rose from the grave and all of a sudden the disciples who had been fighting for some way to put his physical death into context in their physical lives, they saw him again. They saw his physical being impossibly but oh so truly alive again. They saw the spiritual truth of his existence embodied again in the same comfortable form that they had grown to know and love while he walked among them before the cross. And they knew. They knew that while their eyes could not yet see the future, could not yet see the larger picture, could not yet see the kingdom of God's grace and mercy where the angels and the once departed and now finally fully alive humans revel together in the joy and peace and fullness of God's mercy, they knew that if he said that he had seen it, well, then his words must be true. And if he said he had been about the business of preparing places for us, well, then that was just a fact. And if he said that they knew the way to the place where he was going, then you know what? Even if they didn't realize that they knew it, it must be true. And if he promised to come again to lead them to the kingdom, well, then they could count on it. And in that moment, a change happened within them in terms of how they would handle their grief and their fears and their confusions for the rest of their lives. Since they accepted the truth of their beloved Lord, they could accept that the spiritual kingdom that he had come to reveal was just as he said it would be. And that gave them a strength to live out their physical lives in this world with courage and confidence in God's grace, even if their human eyes couldn't quite yet see the glorious spiritual reality that he proclaimed. Because they'd seen Jesus physically before the cross as he proclaimed the spiritual truths, the spiritual reality of God and God's kingdom, and because they had seen him physically die and physically rise, physically and spiritually rise, they knew that he was the way and the truth that would fill them with that abundant life that springs up in this life and overflows into the kingdom to come. And that changed the way that they dealt with grief and fear and frustration for the rest of their lives. They went from this dejected lot of, of cowards and broken men and women who had abandoned him on that, that horrible night and, and gathered trembling in that locked upper room after his death. They were transformed into men and women who against all the odds would go on 
to change the world in his name. And it was all because they were empowered by their faith in the certainty of the ultimate goodness of the God that Jesus revealed to them. And that's the kind of faith that, that Christ offers us still. That's the faith that strengthens us to face the hard times, the times of chaos and grief, the times when the unknown out there just beyond the range of our physical sight seems so dour, so gloomy. It's in times like these. It's in times just like these that we give thanks for the glimpses that God has granted us of the spiritual vastness of God's power, God's compassion that we've seen revealed through the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. For they strengthen us to enter today fully, lovingly, confidently, resting only on the promises of our risen Lord. May we claim those promises today and may they transform us from people who waver on the expectations and assumptions that we make about our, our physical lives into people who stake their lives and their futures on the sure and certain hope that God's kingdom exists and God walks with us always in this life. And even as we pass through that gateway of the grave, where we will finally see with our own eyes the glory of our Lord and God who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our worship continues as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join together in the prayers of the church. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world that you have made, including volcanoes and ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. Today we especially lift to you Irene and Myrtle, Cecilia and Cheryl, Kim, Joe, Marcia, Elaine and Donna, John, Jean, Marie, Inez, Salim, Denny, Steve, Marge, Bob, and Vince, Linda, Shirley, Sherry, Sasha, and Sophie, 
Jacob, and Jim. And along with them, Lord, we lift to you those who are just on our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we also seek your condolences for the families of Marjo Sebastian, as well as for Jean and Kevin and David Lyons on the death of Jean's brother, Marvin, just five days short of his 96th birthday. We thank you for promising to walk with us through the difficult times, and we seek that condolence for these families now as they grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. May God's peace be with you. May God's grace surround you. May you rise upon the mercy of God's love. May God's hope maintain you. May God's joy sustain you. May your life reflect the kingdom up above. Now lay aside all that divides us and embrace this gift of grace. On the cross, Christ bore the cost and forgave the human race. There's a part of me that cannot see how God could take this view. But if Christ forgave one such as me, how could I not forgive you too? May God bless and keep you May God's face shine on you. May you know the gentle mercies of our Lord. May your heart be grateful. May your laughter be playful as you rest upon the promise of God's word. May you know the peace of God every moment, every day. May your friends and family be well and whole. May your life be filled with grace and peace as you walk upon the way, spreading hope and joy and love where'er you go. May God's peace be with you. May God's grace surround you. May you rise upon the mercies of God's love. May God's hope maintain you. May God's joy sustain you. May your life reflect God's kingdom up above. May you know the peace of God every moment, every day. May your friends and family be well and whole. May your life be filled with grace and peace as you walk upon the way, spreading hope and joy and love where'er you go. Spreading hope and joy and love where'er you go. Spreading hope and joy and love where'er you go. We join together in the offertory prayer. Merciful God, 
Our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again with your word and your presence in our lives, that we may be strengthened for service. We pray this in the name of our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in our risen Lord, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Friends, at this time, I just want to thank you for spending this time with us as we worship our God, lift our praise, our prayers, our thanksgivings, and our concerns, knowing that God is compassionate and powerful, always with us in this life, even when we walk through the darkest valleys. I pray that the resurrection of Christ fills you with joy and hope today and all through your lives. We join in the blessing. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, as the Father sends me, so I send you. Christ is risen, just as he said, go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.